going back. Now I'm going to buy into all that. Hey, hey, ain't going to hide. Going to let all the fears lie. Go for the picture. It's all my side. Got all of the love. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to the new now. I am super duper happy to be talking once again with Harold Kotz. Uh, we are going to continue our talk on belief. We did one called Beyond Belief, you know, a life beyond belief, a great life and how to live. And obviously that's a huge topic that could fill, you know, books and books and books and video series. And uh, well, Harold, welcome once again to the show. My pleasure. As always. So, so a little bit of what we talked about before we started recording was belief, your energy, you know, how it affects you, perhaps how it affects your health, both, uh, you know, mentally, physically, and even spiritually, and how people can work on that aspect of themselves, which I found, as you found, one of the most important things we can understand about ourselves, our belief system, and how that can affect our day-to-day -day living. Yes, yes, this is... Kind of the thing. I think when, when we talked last time about belief, it was more the collective level, the collective belief system, like religions and uh, ideologies. And But when I think about um, coaching people in, in spiritual processes, very often you, you just run into a wall and nothing works. And, and uh, in most of the cases, it's just some sort of belief that got stuck in people. I'm not good enough, or I'm not worth to be loved, or, you know, I mean, these are the classics that occur quite frequently in, um, in our cultures. So... But, but it, sometimes you, you really find completely individual belief systems or belief sentences that are just the sum of experiences one made during childhood or during adulthood or whatever. Um, and as long as this sits and is not questioned, not deleted. Keep coming across every now and then, and I'm, I'm sure everyone has got one thing that is stopping him from progressing. Definitely. I'm here without concept, going with the flow, and um, do you have any type of belief that limits you? Me, all the time. I mean, not good enough hits me, uh, used to hit me hard to the point where it would, uh, you know, get me angry or stop me moving forward or blocking what I needed to hear about the information coming my way, which was meant to help me. You know, I see that now, but at the time, you know, you hear how you can be better and that uh, crazy belief says how you're not good enough instead of how you can be better, which obviously how you can be better is useful to work with onto yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, how you're not good enough is, is uh, very detrimental to uh, any progress I found. If you, uh, depending on, uh, mm -hmm. Your course, yes. So yes, of course. I think that's a big one with almost everybody not being good enough. Mm, I mean, it, it can it can work as a spring to really um, kind of accomplish more and become better. If you if you're in that constant feeling of I need to deliver more, then you mobilize your more energies and more powers to to meet your own demands and then 
but it doesn't work on the social plane because you just scare off people when you're on that road. What, what do you mean? Because then they, they feel not good enough. You know, I, I remember myself at university being kind of afraid not to make it, not to be intelligent enough to study. And uh, I had a completely weird pictures about the demands at university that's all complicated and difficult to make it. And But it was just like continuing school. There was nothing special about being there. Um, so I just followed my own expectations and made double and triple of what I was supposed to do. Mm. And I scared everybody off. And all the other ones hated me because they felt not good enough looking at me. So <laughs> it seems to be the mechanism how it, it uh, multiplies. Interesting. Like so you when, 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 when it's as a form of scarcity of self-confidence in the field, it's handed over exactly in that form of scarcity to others it's like with abundance and scarcity on the monetary plane mm. it's also if you have the feeling of scarcity you just reproduce that feeling whether you take mm. or give doesn't matter uh, it's the feeling in the background that multiplies um, so on, on the in individual plane can kind of drive me, drive me or others to things that they wouldn't be capable of doing without that damage in, on the mental plane. But it's not designed to make us happy in a way, somehow. Mm. I've never looked at it quite that way. And now that I'm kind of contemplating some of the interactions I've had over my life when I felt not good enough, I can see what you're saying. It doubles and triples with the interactions you're having with the people in your life as you kind of create what in, you believe, yeah, and it comes back at you. And in and, and relationship uh, issues, I see it all also like, like lack of self-confidence, of self-worth and self-love um, mirrors and, and forces each other I mean, in between partners. And then you, you start to struggle for a tiny little bit of self-confidence and self-worth that still is in the field. Um, and when there's not enough for both people in a relationship, then this entire devaluation thing starts. And it can happen through through many, many mechanisms. I mean, you can just talk in a way that devaluates the other or you can do incredible things like uh, cooking and cleaning and the other one things I would never be capable of doing that in that quality so even you know be behaving in an over perfect way is devaluating the environment in a way if the topic is violent if the topic so, is what? Uh, it's if it's kind of in the field, if it's viral, the topic. Viral. Oh. So you, you would overcompensate by cleaning too much to looking at not being good enough. So working in the opposite direction to prove a value of worth beyond what's behind you in yeah. the viral field. Yeah. Yeah, like, like if the man has a brilliant job and earns a lot of money and the woman is just staying at home, puff, devaluated. Mm. One gets perfect, the other one is devaluated. And it's not coming by the deed itself, it's just the, the lack of self-confidence and self-love and self-worth in the field, in the self-perception. That is expressing itself when triggering the reaction in the other. Hmm. It's interesting. I've never done that before, kind of diving into a topic that is actually not thought through yet <laughs> and trying to, to discover things uh, during the talk. It's an interesting dynamic.
It is. It's, I guess you're looking at codependence in a way, you know, as I consider back to my stockbroker days, mm -hmm. you know, lots of things are coming up as we're discussing this. And I remember a fellow I used to know at the time that would go out of his way to make lots of money, probably because he felt not good enough, flashy cars, you know, flashy apartment clothes, but he would always belittle the women he spent time with directly and indirectly through his actions. Because perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, now that you mention this, and, and, you know, eventually we didn't get along because, you know, he was uh, an asshole, for lack of a better way to put it, in my opinion. But he thought perhaps less of himself, so he had to make more of himself. And in that interaction, definitely hurt a lot of the people he was in relationship with, you know, on purpose or not. I did notice that happen at the time. So I can see now what, what you mean by overcompensating for some of the negative traits you have and, and negatively influence all of those that are uh, related to you in your energy fields you know, through your day-to-day -day actions or inactions. Yeah, I, I had an interesting um, um, insight uh, during a session. Um, actually, it was about uh, a woman that ha had lost her husband. It was 20 years ago, um, but she, she had to do other things and she'd never found time to really go through the pain of the loss and that caused some turbulences in her life. And um, she described this relationship as perfect, the one she lost. And she was absolutely loving him and he was loving her and they were, um, she was his princess and she kind of told all sorts of cute stories about how she he lifted her on the podest and uh, made her bring out the best qualities in herself. So everything she described was actually in this plane of being the perfect couple. And then he appeared in the background field. To, and my expectation was just to, to help her to come into the grief. And then he said something really weird. He said, I'm sorry that I victimized you. Well, he appeared during your, uh, um, your, your, uh, your, your session with her? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it happens quite often that... Uh, the ones who have already left the material plane still need to put some things right. Okay. And and normally I'm I'm really bad in his spoken language from that plane. I get all sorts of empathies and uh, kind of third eye perception seeing them. And but but with the language normally it's not not coming easily to me. But and that particular case I could hear and he really said I want to apologize for victimizing you and she completely could not get what he meant because her entire perception of the relationship was so perfect and uh, um, um, needed to, to basically dive into that to find out what that or victimizing in his behavior. And uh, the only thing we found actually, a big part of the sorrow that was left was a feeling of, I'm not capable to live without you. And this is where the victimization comes in. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if my partner thrives on my compliments when I'm gone there's no power left when my partner thrives on the trust I give him and he's gone there's no reason to trust myself during the relationship it can be extremely fruitful because one missing part compliments another missing part and you can but this has a name, it's called codependency. So, yeah, so, so 
the only thing that really brings a solution is to go into the core of the belief. And this is something that seems to be always shared in a codependency, that the lack of something like I think I believe I'm not good enough is the common denominator that then develops a complementary game on top of it or complementary codependency. How did that work out with her? Um, I think, okay. I think, okay. So she, at least uh, I'm, I know she found the grief and went through it. So that's one big part. And uh, the rest is up to her. It's like just, you know, you can just kickstart the engine and, and you need to wait for the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> like in old days. Um, another thing that just crossed my mind when, when we talk about belief and um, how it rules our reality. Um, when, when I think about the weird discussions between awakened people and not yet awakened or never waking up people. Um, I often hear that word in the discussion. Like when I state some uh, facts about uh, medical issues with masks and test swaps and vaccinations, um, I think I'm standing on, on feet of hard science because I read the papers and everything is black and white and peer reviewed and uh, based on numbers. And then people say, I don't believe. Or I believe something. And I go like, hey, how does that work? It's not about belief here. It's about hard facts, you know? We are discuss. We we are. I am discussing hard facts. Oh, that I didn't figure out yet where this comes from. Something has happened in society that allows it that people anchor themselves in beliefs, and I mean it's not new. Religion works exactly the same way. But normally I, I did have those isolated islands of madness called religions where people suddenly believed something that was completely weird and manufactured uh, for whatever reason. Um, not trying to offend any, anyone, but this is actually how it looks like from my perspective. Um, but then you had the rest of the life and the rest of the life was still free. You know, it was something where experience and reasoning and discussion and finding was able to lead to some sort of coherence in between people. And somehow it looks like humanity completely lost that sphere. And, and whenever this happens, uh, the last straw that spirits can pull is really completely cognitive dissonance and going into the state of not saying anything anymore and staring holes into the air. Like, uh, um, when you discuss the obvious side effects of vaccinations and you talk to somebody who went to get a shot or two, and you ask him, why did you do that? You don't get an answer anymore. It's uh, complete silence, st gay, staring holes into the air and complete silence and no answer. As if the question doesn't exist or there is no reason. And, um, but as well, I'm still swimming in, 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 in the attempt to, to try to find out how those 
cognitive mechanisms really work. Yeah, the why would come up. I know. <laughs> How, why? Yeah. S some, somehow this component of believing in something is anchored there and really causes trouble and causes people to make uh, possibly or not possibly scientifically proven lethal, lethal decisions for themselves. Yeah. I don't know if what, what YouTubes and uh, Telegram videos you watch in Japan, but the one that impressed me most is kind of a line of people standing waiting for the shot. And then one is carried out by uh, um, first aid by first aid team. And he's lying kind of completely shaking and obviously uh, on the way to leave this plane. And the people st still stand in the row waiting for their shot. Although they could see with their own eyes how somebody who just received the shot is on the brink of dying. And they see it and they don't react. And not a single one left that really? of 25, 30 people. Um, Interesting. Can you say where the, be where the belief function comes into that equation i can see that i always wonder on the why i mean it's it's kind of obvious right if they're still standing there they believe something other than what they're or maybe they're seeing something other than what you're seeing maybe their belief is altering it's, all, it's obviously altering something inside them that's uh getting to an end result that's different i would think from a coherent being who's watching uh that sort of a situation develop before their eyes It's what, what I get, I mean, it's just popping up now, kind of in a, in, a, in a perception that it is a question where the point of authority lies. Mm. Um, yes. When, 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 I pick, when I picture myself as an entity and I look for that decision-making point in myself, where does the authority come from that I base my decisions on? And it's, it's really a one-to-one -one question. Is it me or is it society? Hmm. Who delivers the authority? And if kind of a, a consent in society is, and all the advertisements say, you know, put up your sleeve, get vaccinated, and let's do that and do this, and it's all good, and it's so scary to not have it, and you are responsible for the ones you kill if you don't, and then and, and you, you, you bombard it day in, day out with that propaganda. And if this point of authority is actually based on what I think the collective is thinking is right. Mm. Then the individual is completely lost. He can't make a choice. And it's not of the question of whether he's aware of the risk or not aware of the risk. It's really a question on what level of the fractal the authority comes from. And what I sense is that switching that point from I needs a tremendous amount of energy. Switching away from the I? Switching away from the we to the I to mm. make an individual decision. It mm. it's, feels like something that really absorbs a huge amount of energy by switching the field from one mode to another that is just not available. Not easily. I mean, you can take, you can take responsibility if you have energy to basically mm. meet the results of your decisions. Mm. So it demands energy to stand for yourself. You need to be energized enough to survive a discussion with your neighbor. You need to be energized enough to lose members of your family if they disagree with you and start hating you because of what you say. 
and media are projecting that all the time that uh, conspiracy theorists are to be treated as madmen and mad women. Um, so all this need courage and energy. And already in the anticipation, you need energy to move yourself into that position where you are vulnerable. So how can we how can we unlash some more energy into that point? Good question. To help people to enable themselves to make uh, self-confident, high-centered decision to believe in us. How have you done it? I'm sorry, I can't deliver that blueprint because I was born that way. <laughs> ah, I understand. No. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it never was different. I, I think this is part of the um, Asperger spectrum. Asperger? A lack of social Asperger. I'm autism spectrum. Right. Kind of the lowest level Aspergers. Okay. And they, compl they completely lack social intelligence. Hmm. Which, you know, it is part of it. Social intelligence is to be able to swim with the swarm. Hmm. To consider <laughs> the reasoning of the collective as uh, dominating the field. Mm -hmm. To be able to get a beautiful and good and Asperger's don't have that. Mm. If they think about something and it's logical, then all you can do is pray, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> nothing else helps. And so, no, sorry, I was born that way. I can't help with a healthy solution because Asperger's is not healthy as well. But, but maybe the Asperger's actually came to rescue us from ourselves by being the ones who are crazy enough. In, in German, it works better. In, in German, this type of crazy is displaced. How so? So moved out of the center. Verrückt. You know, if you take a chair and you push it to another spot in the room, Uh, it is fair broken, moving it to somewhere off, off place. Okay. And uh, my feeling is with all these mad people we meet today, actually they are crazy because they needed to go out of the center of things, out of the mainstream, to find a position that is crazy out of the perspective of the mainstream, but actually measured in the context of total health, total spiritual health, they're exactly what is balancing the mainstream, but com mm. completely off track. Of course. So I always really, really, really appreciate crazy people and instead of judging them or pitying them, I think uh, I try to find out what part of the mainstream they actually manage to balance try to balance. It's not always fruitful, but the motivation of nature is always very beautiful in those spots. And you can really start honoring those uh, like best example, the um, um, what do you call this disease where, where people have one chromosome too much? Oh, mongoloids. I think I think yes. I forget I forget that there's a more polite yes. name for it, but they're always smiling. Yeah. yeah. And and I find yes. Yes. When I walk by them, I feel more, this... more comfortable than, than beside regular people. When I'm standing beside them, it feels good to me. <laughs> yes. It's such on spiritual level, this is such a gift. Yeah. They yeah. really if 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 you're into them, you can completely unlock pure childhood emotionality. Mm. They have zero blockages, which can be irritating, especially when they grow up and develop sexual desires. But it's 
so cute the way they express it mm. um, pure emotionality and this is what the rest of the society obviously lost so seems to me they've come to teach maybe you know just to show people you know a balance as you say in the energetic mm. fields beyond being lost mm. in uh, you know fear as opposed to I don't want to say the dogs of human world, but maybe just, you know, without uh, blockages and how they express themselves, as you say. Mm. Mm. I remember the, the teacher of my middle son, she mongoloid son, same age as my son. And um, he participated in all sorts of school events, like when they went on a school holiday somewhere. Of course, she couldn't leave her son at home, so he was always with the class when they did something together. So I had quite a few opportunities to observe this boy. But the most amazing thing was this lady was the best teacher in school. Mm. She was the only one that could read the emotions of the little ones and behave in a healthy way towards it. And um, she really moved mountains with that type of energy. Like the only teacher that just inspired, and, and it was like infectious. She inspired the parents to make the decision of giving marks to the children. Well, the parents Completely unthink. Yeah. Yeah, it was like an open discussion. She asked, what shall we do? Do you want to have it traditionally here? And then your children come home and they cry because they got a bad mark or you're proud because they have a good one. Or shall we just call the day a day and stop with this madness and uh, honor every child for what it is? Great and, discussion. Uh, I wish my parents had it that came so on. Yeah, it came so naturally from her end because she was in that realm of honoring mm. every child for what it is. Uh, but it was not a long discussion and they, till grade four, they dropped the entire idea of valuing and devaluing children. Was it a public school that she was working in? Yeah, yeah. Normal, normal public school, nothing mm. special about it from the self-definition. That was amazing. I think if you, if you really think about it, that came due to this child of hers mm. teaching her. I mean, I, I feel, you know, probably if you have some open eyes and you look around anywhere in your life, you know, we can get back a little bit to how to... Uh, increase your own energy or, or face your own beliefs, there's probably always something in your day-to-day -day which is aiming to help you, I would think, get over whatever your blocks happen to be. It seems to me the world is always trying to balance and balance is on a natural, you know, even if you go to physics, as you say, there always seems to be a balance of energies uh, on, on a natural level and even on an energetic or human or interactive or emotional level, I found anyways in my life, mm -hmm. if you look around. Yeah, I mean, in the, on the spiritual plane, most of the balances that um, we find is actually the, the manifestation of the subconsciousness itself. Mm. If anything in us is not seen, it automatically appears in the material plane by some real or symbolic representation. This is kind of the core equation of how reality is manifested. That um, at least in those areas where things run in timelines, uh, you have this splitting it into narr narratives and uh, using the unseen as the things to be seen. I mean, it's logical. In a way. It is logical. Not seen. It must be made visible so how can you make something visible you project it into the material plane and make it attack you 
<laughs> or annoy you or drive you crazy or marry you. <laughs> or marry you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, even in my life recently, you know, I've been struggling with freeing my own energy and uh, a lady close to us at one point had brought home a pet turtle in a balcony on the second level near our bedroom and put it in a plastic box. Japanese people like keeping turtles for luck or something. Usually they keep them in big glass aquariums, but this lady put hers in a crazy cheap plastic box and it would make noise day and night trying to escape, you know, for weeks. It was interesting and I couldn't help but have to hear that and see it and watch it even outside my bedroom window and, you know, get the feeling of how I was caged how I needed to escape, you know, how I was put in certain circumstances and to look at my own desire to want to save something and realize you can't so to kind of watch and see what happens, you know, with the circumstances of something that's beyond your control, yet it seems to have a profound effect on your energetic consciousness when you watch something like that. Could you, could you um, locate something that was caged inside of yourself? I had to at the time, yes. And, and I had to see how I was trying to push my own boundaries or making the world the way I want it to make it instead of the way that it was, changing my outside circumstances instead of looking inside. And this went on for two weeks. And over the last little while, when I decided you know, through some of my own studies and my own experiences to realize when I wanted something to change, I had to change, you know, not change anything outside of me. Uh, only two days ago, the turtle was moved. It's not there anymore. Uh, like suddenly, mm. I don't know whether it died or it moved or they changed it or gave it away. I have, you know, I have no idea what happened, but it just actually yesterday, the day before, suddenly my wife came and said, the turtle's gone. <laughs> you know, and, and it was like mm. I said, literally the house next to us is very close. It's Japan. So, you know, maybe, you know, four yards away, something like that, you know, six yards away, the turtle was there. So, you know, you got quite an eyeful of it on the second floor of our house. And uh, now it's not there. As I've decided over mm -hmm. the last little while to, you know, look, and I, I'm feeling much more relaxed in my life, realizing it's my own energy I have to work with whenever some, something isn't uh, working the way I would like, not, you know, no finger pointing <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Possibly, two, it's funny, two days ago, that was Wednesday. Okay, that would be quick, because I, I, um, I heard about people observing um, a shift in the energetic field of the planet. Mm. That basically integrated a couple of things. The animal kingdom canceling the contract to take over all the suffering for us humans. Interesting. I mean, this is kind of part of the um, um, of the core journey of humanity that we started, that we disconnected from the collective were pushed into the position to start misbehaving and self-traumatizing and going through all those cycles and journeys and things. And the animal kingdom always took the heartbeats Oof, and for sure. most of the pain. And um, Interesting. that resulted from our deeds. And they carried a lot. And that was, I mean, they don't judge. But at a certain point, a lot is a lot and it's heavy. So I already heard kind of uh, voices from the animal kingdom kind of reminding the humans, maybe it's enough now. Maybe you could take care of your own. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <It's> heavy, maybe. <laughs> maybe you can stop. Being <laughs> kind of that sort of thing. <laughs> and, and a couple of days ago, I kind of, I didn't witness it, but uh, came to my ears that that was solved mm. in between God, the animals, and the humans, and that the 
what what I felt from 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 the shift in the field actually was that uh, um, this contract was deleted. The animals will not suffer in our place anymore, and all the suffering we cause will forcefully come back in form of empathy to the ones who is doing it. And from the days, kind of, that was quite a precise hit on the day when that was done and decided and shifted. So maybe she just finally could feel her little turtle suffering and realize that if she does that to the turtle, it's painful to herself mm. because the animals stop carrying that burden for humans. Because mm. there's been quite and a may, few. May, yeah. Maybe this this is if if it is it it's quick. I would have expected uh, integration of a major shift in order like that over two to three years into the future until it really unfolds. But maybe maybe the turtle was a, a lucky first one to profit from that. You know, I have to look at both sides. Yeah, turtle could have died. The turtle could have escaped. The turtle could have moved. It was all kinds of poss I mean, I have to look at both potential possibilities, of course, because I'm not aware which one, what, which happened, but, um, you know, maybe it has a lot to do with, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I've seen a lot of videos anyways on disasters or lots of crazy weather everywhere. I mean, a, a, a hail tornado storm came through here about a week ago through Osaka. It was crazy. You know, it's something that's never happened. Two hours of lightning and hail, you know, through the city. And I've heard of uh, similar circumstances in many places across mm. this crazy uh, dream. We shouldn't call that weather because it's not weather. Mm. It's a weapon. And it's done by humans. And it's obvious. But it's not a question of belief at that point. Because what we do have, we had intense camp trailing the days before. For we sure. had all the symptoms of magnesium oxide poisoning in the respiratory organs, mm. which says, yes, they take every single plane they have. Uh, and then you need to replace the aluminum oxide with magnesium oxide because a normal jet engine doesn't make aluminum oxide, just makes magnesium oxide. You need military planes for aluminum oxide. So. If you want to have a lot of this, it's magnesium oxide that was visible in the um, actually medical findings of all the people who breathe it. Everyone with flu symptoms, ah. scratchings, throat, slight fevers, uh, whatever. It's, it's in the books. You can't get around that. Then, very interesting in Europe, around most of the big cities, circular structures on the weather radar, definitely radiation induced. So somebody is working heavily on the elect electromagnetic fields, especially in the urban areas. This is why those storms always hit the densely populated areas. In Germany, definitely the most dense populated area of the country. <laughs> And I've seen the rings around Zagreb and Croatia. You know, you say you had hail and thunderstorm in Tokyo. So this is a weather warfare at its best, hitting the cities. And why? Because COVID doesn't work anymore, really, or COVID is done. They've got what they wanted to, having all the vaccines out, having the... What is it? It's not a vaccine. It's a self-replicating RNA-based contact poison jumping from the vaccinated to the unvaccinated. So they don't need to push that agenda anymore. So they need something new to make fear, mm. to make people believe, as we are into that world, word, that they need a government to uh, offer solutions. So... I've heard about that discussion that certain uh, um, parts of the deep state were pushing now for months to shift back from COVID to climate catastrophe in the in the published um, um, reality. 
reality or I don't know, how do you call the world that is created by publication of people who just invent stories? It's not a reality. Not propaganda? It's also it's, it's weird. It's weird. I mean, it is something people believe in because it's in the newspaper. But then whatever is in the newspaper is completely fabricated and invented. So it doesn't exist in any prior material plane. But if it's published, people believe in it. And if everybody believes in something, then it is of the material plane because of the material plane is just the creation of our spirit in any case. So, um, I mean, this is <laughs> Back to belief. the deep root. Back to belief. The deep root of propaganda goes in really manifesting realities that didn't exist previously. Unless somebody is keeping the truth up, I mean, the previous truth that used to be material before. Mm. Maybe all realities are like that, <laughs> being kept up that didn't exist previously. According, according to physics, yes. I mean, and then if, if, if it leads to contradiction, uh, physics are just changing the past to heal the contradictions. Mm. This is what is causing then the Man Mandela effects. Mm. Um, so this is all a really soft design. Um, created when people believe something. What do you think of the graphene thing? I, I, I've been meaning to ask you about that, that is supposedly in the vaccines that supposedly is polluting the world. I've heard all kinds of stories on both sides of that uh, that uh, shit show, so to speak. And uh, did you have uh, any experiences or opinion or uh, scientific ways of uh, understanding that, maybe beyond what I can figure out for myself? I mean, the, those particles are like razor blades, just that they always stay sharp. Only difference. Um, and they cut through cell membranes and destroy cells from outside. And of course, if you do that, I, I think this is how they argue in the pharmaceutical industry. If you have something that continuously destroys cells, of course, your immune system needs to clear up the mess and it's activated. So you have some sort of immune response. The problem is what needs to be removed is all human protein. Mm. So if you have any form of immune response that could um, useful for something or, or just addressing something specific, it's definitely just causing autoimmune disease because what the immune system is trained on are remains of human cells, of human protein, of human whatever. So just by logic, it's not a good idea. On the paper, yes, you do get some immune response, uh, but that's just the word. Definitely you don't get Im immunity against COVID, which is reflected by the numbers vaccinated are more prone to get COVID than the unvaccinated and they die more often than the unvaccinated. So, so it's not about not getting COVID in any case. Then very interesting from, from the um, microscopy I've seen, it's only in the first batches of the vaccinations. They don't give a damn what's on the what's in the papers, what's on the label. The first batches were just graphene. So the old and the weak and the poor and the stupid got a kill shot. And they didn't even bother to spend a lot of money to print mRNA for those groups. This is how it looks to me. I mean, uh, I might be wrong. But this is what I heard about people taking vaccines, putting them onto a decent microscope and checking what's inside. Hmm. Um, other vaccines with the same labeling 
had cross-domain bacteria and morgellons in. This is about mind control and getting people sick with morgellons and tagged with uh, surveillance technology in it. And cross-domain bacteria is archon DNA. So it's about making people ready to be taken over by an archon for demonic possession. So this is also in some of the vaccines labeled the same like the ones that same company, same label. And then apparently there must be some with mRNA. But when I think about the effects of the mRNA, which is the shedding and the cross infection of unvaccinated people with that contact poison, uh, in reality, I've seen that only originating from doctors in hospitals. Mm. This is kind of now my, my very limited personal experience. I visited a lady in Berlin. She works in the hospital. She's not vaccinated. The doctors at the hospital are vaccinated. She had irregular bleeding. I, 12, 12 hours after visiting her, started to shed proteins through my skin. Felt all like well lubricated with a whitish liquid on the top of my skin. Mm. And I got slight fever attacks and felt a bit sick, but it was over after one day. And then the woman I'm sharing this house with, after we saw each other uh, for a couple of hours, 12 hours later, she's postmenopause, started bleeding. Really? with zero contact to any other human. Hmm. So uh, from my experience, it has an incubation time of about 12 hours. And it is a self-replicating contact poison, RNA-based self-replicating contact poison. That is producing spike proteins. This is what it felt like because it attacks the reproductive organs. Hmm. and this is not about belief once we're on that topic this is uh, in parts my personal experience but of course it's only my personal experience but we do have Canadian studies that say that 100% of the vaccinated are infertile really yes no doubt it's tested I mean, I watched my father after mm. he had his vaccines lose his memory. You know, he, I just talked with him two days ago and I mentioned the vaccines because he was having more uh, physical ailments than he had previously. Suddenly he's in his eighties. And mm. his first thing to me was what vaccines? I didn't get any vaccines. And I go, aha, uh -huh. I go, did you forget? We talked two weeks ago. He goes, oh, oh yeah, right, right. Yes, 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 I, I did. Mm. I forgot. And I'm going, I think they're working and <laughs> not in the way you want them to. <laughs> mm. Yeah, with my with my mother, it's hard to say because she had um, memory loss already before this entire madness started. And it's definitely accelerating. But um, I can't say if it is due to the vaccine or if, if it would have accelerated in any case. Um, weird, weird scenario. Very weird. And still, people believe believe what's in the mainstream. Maybe this is really uh, an, an effect that involves this aspect of reality. The belief creates a material plane that feeds back into the belief mm. because they they perceive reality in an intuitive way that then makes different beliefs. I mean, or two different worldviews, one based on the facts and one based on the propaganda. That still stand next to each other. Uh, but the fields are not coherent. This is what I, I really always um, 
kind of experience that nothing can bring those fields together again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe death can. I mean, I've, I've or had... the finals. The mm. final, the final split of the timelines will solve the problem, and then everyone gets his own timeline, or every group gets its own timeline. I think we have that already in another talk. Well, I'm finding having more troubles than ever before communicating with anyone who's had a vaccine. I mean, my father used to call me every week, and yeah. then when he had his vaccine, he stopped calling which is interesting. I've heard it, it attacks the empathic centers mm. of, mm. of people, which you know that's never happened before. Like every week he talked with me and then suddenly it just stopped literally a day or two after mm. he got his vaccines. Now, if I don't call, he doesn't call. It's, mm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting that way. Mm. I've talked with other people who have said, you know, a lady that used to be able to see auras, and for some strange reason, even though seeing where she went and got her vaccines, and that kind of put an end to that uh, empathic part of her. She couldn't see them anymore after the fact. Mm. Mm. Okay, but that's only the vaccine. The shedding itself doesn't stop that. I didn't lose it. I, I can feel a change in the uh, sexuality. So it definitely did good portion of damage in the sexual organs, but not with the perception. Maybe you have to get the actual vaccine to have it affect your perception. If, if how our quantic mm -hmm. uh, actions work and don't work as far as infecting or altering, I guess your ability towards that, it would seem you would have to make a conscious choice to alter that yourself before it can change. Perhaps. Mm. Possible. So, where does this all take us? What do you think? It's a good question. You know, I'm wondering on the permission of the archons to be able to do this, uh, the historical perspective in reset timelines, the ideals of the biggest challenge leading perhaps to the biggest uh, success or the biggest victory, perhaps. I would think you would have to be 100% in your own uh, juice and belief system before you can be free of this. So it could be the ultimate challenger, maybe. Could be what mm -hmm. we've asked for, you know, the, the ultimate opponent to become the ultimate heroes. You know, I like to, I'd like to see it that way anyways. I, I just saw a, not a, a film, but basically it was a recorded presentation by somebody who really advertised for a future projected with uh, smart cities solving all the problems mankind has, like why should we have 14 million cars in one big city when that occupy all the parking spaces and we can have fully automatized vehicles that run all day. And when you need one, you take one and everything is organized, fully automatized by the company. And you don't even need to pay for your car because the data they get are so valuable. The data you get about you are so mm. valuable that they can make their profit just from the data. Mm. You know? And it really was projecting a beautiful new world where the problems were solved, less pollution, no problems with climate change anymore. <laughs> um, it was completely weird because this world had no shadow. Mm. No, no, it did have. He mentioned a couple of shadows, like, like uh, you know, if all the cars are maintained by the company who are offering the services, then all the car workshops to fix all the damages from the car accidents 
will go bankrupt. So people will need to reorient themselves. That was the the shadow of that vision. And but the real shadows like like reducing lifespan to 35 years due to 5G radiation in the cities and uh, reducing the quality of consciousness down to psychopath status, killing off the entire soul. This is something I would regard as uh, a tiny little shadow of that concept. It's big. It wasn't even. <laughs> oh, mm, tiny. tiny. <laughs> only this. Only. It's only this. So you don't need you. So we don't need. It's, yeah. I mean, th- this is how the people um, experience themselves and project that onto everybody else. If you if you go into those circles, who are driving those agendas. The only factor that is taken into account is the intelligence of a human. I would agree. Yeah. This is the only thing they reason about. And if you can increase the intelligence, then it's good. And if it's less, then it's bad. They don't even know that there are more aspects to a human soul than intelligence. Would because they don't, have, apparently, they don't have any other um, aspect left, which is. It's not. It's not evil. It's just the clinical definition of a psychopath. But, um, I guess it would depend how you measure intelligence. That would have to come into it. <laughs> this is a good question. I mean, the tests out there are quite um, intelligently designed. They <laughs> always deliver the same result. No, no matter how often you try to raise your IQ by making another test, it's always one and the same number. Mm. So uh, I like those tests. They're really, really well made. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just one, one fragment of a broader spectrum. I guess they wouldn't have a spiritual component, the uh, IQ tests, I'm guessing. No, no. I mean, it, it does go down somehow to problem-solving techniques you can uh, solve with a synergetic, uh, synesthetic approach. Okay. These are, I mean, it's it's not unspiritual. It goes quite deep down into the into the mm, there's no English word in, in German you have this beautiful distinction between spirit and ghost geist ghost. but ghost in English is just you know the leftover of somebody who died so it doesn't carry the meaning geist mm. in in German it's both the ghost in English and it is a form of mental spirituality mm. where you connect to the higher spheres, you connect to God, but emotions don't play any role in it. Geist. It is completely not about emotion. It's also because if the emotions are out, it's not about heart consciousness. It's about a spiritual connection of the mind to the higher spheres. This is the geistige Welt, the ghostly world. And I've seen people going quite to, to a high degree of wisdom by traveling those worlds and derive knowledge and wisdom from um, perception of that realm. Um, but it's, it still has nothing to do with the heart and nothing to do with the soul in a way. Maybe a new way of putting everything together would help understand the impact of belief. I mean, I, you would have to have all of those working, I would think, to really get a good grasp on your own belief system, in my opinion, kind of like looking at something from outside the circle. And it would be maybe the only way, maybe that's why people get so caught in their own belief system is their inability or lack thereof or lack practice, lack of practice 
And there, you know, you mentioned energy earlier in our conversation. So maybe they don't have the energy to go outside mm-hmm. their own circle, kind of see things from a distance, mm-hmm. which is, uh, you know, belief is so, 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 so close to everyone mm-hmm. who has any, obviously, that you would have to be able to take a step mm-hmm. back, I would think, to be able to uh, study the, yourself in relation to your own belief and see what that's uh, doing or not doing for you. I, I, it's it's funny. I just I never thought about it before, but I just had an idea of a slightly different definition of what belief is, um, and we could try to define belief as a voluntary limitation of the sphere of observation. Can, can you grab that idea? Uh, the, we must find better words. It's not observation. It's Well, voluntary like when, limitation of the sphere of observation. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I believe in something, uh, the only thing I actually do is, yes, I'm aware of the thing I believe, but mostly it is excluding all other solutions. Mm-hmm. And this, this act of excluding alternative solutions to a problem is more substantial within the belief than the belief itself. The belief itself is harmless because it regards one possibility and it's it's never bad to regard one possibility. Mm. It's getting toxic when I exclude others. I mean, wouldn't that be, I guess, the definition of belief? If you have a strong belief, it kind of excludes everything else. I mean, I guess it would depend on your belief. Your belief could be you have a lot of different perspectives to believe in. <laughs> it's, it's really a good point because when, when, you, when you ask people about the definition of belief, they will always focus on that positive part. Like, I believe in God. This is something strong between me and God. But, but actually, it is content-free. Because it is what it is, full stop. It doesn't change a thing. I recognize a part of reality. So what? So I recognize it or, or don't recognize it. It doesn't change a thing. It's a positive interaction. It is having zero destructive uh, um, outcome to what I observe. So it's quite neutral. But, but emotionally, we really invest a lot of heaviness into it, of value, of depth. I believe in God. Wow, 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 wow. This wow. is a strong bond. But when I look at it the other way around, that actually the act of believing in reality is just a violent exclusion of all other possibilities, then I come very close to what it really does. I mean, on the really uh, practical plane. Somebody who believes in Jesus is capable of killing all those Muslims and uh, um, savages. And it has nothing to do with him believing in Jesus, because Jesus never told him to kill savages. It has a lot to do with excluding other possibilities. Maybe even everything <laughs> to do with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe. So, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's also hiding the violent component of the belief. Because believe in something is not violent, excluding something if somebody else is believing in it or knows it, and then you exclude it, it's cutting straight through into his realm and tries to force him to see something he doesn't see or or not see something he does see. Mm. Maybe that's the difference between people being taught, I would say, to live in their emotional body these days. To me, that seems to be the difference instead of living in 
their feeling body, their higher self, their energetic self. It seems most people are living very much on the surface in their emotional bodies. And belief has everything to do with emotion, I, I, I found anyways. I kind of mm. goes back to what you just mentioned. The, the, the driving force is emotional always. It's, yeah. And mostly the emotional bit anchors in this desire to be embedded in the collective. Mm. Which comes back to the point we had at the beginning. Mm. That uh, to overcome that barrier between I judge according to the belief of the collective, which is easy because you're always embedded in this coziness and you don't carry possibility. Because you always can say, everyone, everyone said and thought so, you know. It even was in the television. <laughs> Mm. Like the planes on 9 11. <laughs> um, yeah. So, it, what can we ask ourselves? Yeah, we, I think that's we can a good thing. Ask ourselves, everyone on his own topic and his own belief. Um, ask yourself, what actually do you exclude? And do, do you really want to do that violent gesture towards your co-humans to negate and devalue and reject and neglect things just because you believe something else? Even to the point where they exclude themselves, I would think if they believe in vaccines and they, they're hurting themselves, they're excluding their own health uh, through their own belief system, it would seem to me. Yeah, yeah, th this comes on top of it if the belief you stick to is toxic and the outcome is not very convenient. And even even my wife's father or my father-in-law who decided he was going to get the vaccine. And of course, I had a little chat with him. And his conclusion was he would rather die from the vaccine than COVID. You know, how do you broach that kind of a belief system? <laughs> okay. It's about, it's, th this, this one is all about responsibility. Mm. As long as the recommendation of the doctor is get vaccinated, you follow the recommendation, you die, it's the doctor's fault. Mm. Or just bad luck with a percentage of uh, havoc the industry is living with. When you say, no, I'm standing against the common sense, the common belief, uh, it's your personal decision. If something goes wrong, you are responsible for your own suffering, death. You've brought it full circle, Harold. I think we've brought this talk full circle. You know, how do you figure it out, go through it, and go around it? Responsibility. You know, if you take more responsibility for yeah. your life, you grow. If you take less responsibility, you end up, uh, you know, where you end up. <laughs> Maybe it's not so much your uh, this social upbringing because I had one as well, or I I hate being told what to do. Is how I look at myself. It's maybe it's just a, as simple as a desire to take responsibility for your life, wherever that takes you. Mm. Mm. Which would definitely make you antisocial if the social melu of the time is anti responsibility. Let's say, and you became responsible, you wouldn't fit in. You know, on the other hand, maybe. If the social feeling of the time became responsible, suddenly you'd have a hundred thousand friends. <laughs> mm. Perhaps. Mm. Okay. We managed to make a short interview. Isn't that amazing? It is. I, I think we've we've taken it around to a really like, like it's an interesting point, you know, and it's something that that's come up with a lot of people I've chatted with, and in this day and age, all the more intelligent I'll say people I get the opportunity to grow with, and I would say that is the one thing they have in common, is the willingness to take responsibility for their lives, 
come what may. And the people that don't, I literally have nothing to say to them anymore. You know, I, I can only smile, bite my tongue and keep moving because, you know, the, the alternative is, is a confrontation of one kind or another, which I'm not interested in, you know, any longer in my life, mm -hmm. whether it's an emotional, spiritual or physical confrontation. But if you take responsibility, especially if you're a part of God, as you say, or you're part of the whole, and you take responsibility for your full potential, I would say even a scientific definition of that is, well, you could probably do anything. <laughs> if you have 100% potential and you take responsibility for it, and if you have 100% you know, uh, potential and you take no responsibility for it, well, I guess you have no potential then. <laughs> All right. Harold, is there anything you'd like to leave our viewers? I would love to continue on. I'd like to discuss and broach more of the topics you had mentioned earlier. If you don't mind my saying, you have some interesting papers coming out uh, very soon. Uh, mm. Is there is there a timeline on that we, we want to share with anybody or shall we just leave it floating for now? And, and as it does, maybe we can talk about that uh, at a future date. Maybe, maybe use the opportunity. Um, I... I always had that rule never to talk about things that are ugly when there's no solution mm. available. So, so um, talking about uh, losing fertility due to shedding and vaccinations, uh, we worked on that. And um, um, maybe just out of... of uh, incomplete memory um, um, number of solutions I came across. Whoever is suffering from long COVID, from what I heard, uh, niacin, vitamin B3, nic nicotinic acid, is doing miracles, getting all the symptoms erased from body um that is one Nic um, nicotinic acid you said yes it's vit vitamin b3 is the most common name or niacin oh, okay um the people who treat long covid patients swear on it okay um if somebody is still afraid of uh COVID itself, but doesn't want to have a, a vaccine, there's one thing out now available, not in all countries yet, but I ho hopefully coming soon. It's from the company Vedicinals. Vedicinals, it's Vedicinals number nine. Medicinals? As in M E D? V, V, maybe oh. V, V. v with a V at the beginning. Vedicinals. From Vedic. Oh, from I see. Vedic medicine. Medicinals oh. based in uh, India for the production. Oh, I see. And the Vedicinals number nine is actually completely blocking the AC2 receptor. Okay. So you cannot get infected. It's working 100% 100 preventive as long as you take it. It has zero side effects. You can eat 500 times more than the um, prescribed amount and you're still healthy and prosper on it. It's like food, superfood. And it's both preventing and uh, um, putting every COVID infection to a quick end just in case you catch one. So it's a fully, fully valid medication for it. And at the moment, I think it's the only one recommended even by the World Health Organization because it, it had the best test results on all the supposedly existing uh, mutations and variants. So that's beautiful. And we did one development. It's called, it's coming uh, online this week or next week. I'm not sure how quick the webmaster is in the shop of biopure.eu it's called refertile Refer, like refertile refertile yeah and this is also the purpose bringing back the fertility in case it's lost 
but it's the way it is designed. It's, this is still a bit problematic. This is why I actually didn't want to make the full publication. It okay. works in combination with the medicinals number nine. Gotcha. Because the the concept of refertile is to basically um, take the adaptive immune response on either the vaccine or the disease itself and rewrite it into an innate immune response. And this is supposed to put an end to the autoimmune effect because you start to fend off things on the surface of your body instead of fighting things inside of your body more, which then includes fighting your own sexual reproductive organs. But to be able to make that shift, the body needs to be clean in the period when you make that shift. So it combines with the medicinals product to stop the reproduction of anything of that sort, both mRNA and virus. And as long as this is completely brought to a halt, then you can make that shift in the immune response, which normally is not possible. I mean, this is kind of the, the evil trap of this bioweapon or mm. contact poison that normally in nature, if I have something causing an autoimmune response, triggering the adaptive immune system and then causing any form of autoimmune response that is killing the patient. He still has some children before he's dead. And within the children, this immune information is rewritten into the innate immune system. And then you have full-scale protection from day one, and you can't even contract that disease. So that is kind of how nature does it. But if it doesn't kill, but kills the reproductive organs, there's no next generation to basically have the information rewritten in the innate immune system. So it needed that solution to rewrite it into the innate. And this is what we worked on. And at least within the development, the radionic development, um, it tested uh, that it works. Now, this week's basically the first batch of products is going to be done. Then we will have an, another testing, radionic testing on the products to make sure that on the material plane, it is still a yes, not no. on the theoretical one, but on the material one. And then, of course, it's only within the um, validity of radionic testing, then we need to go to the patients who really have the infertility problems caused mm. by um, COVID or COVID vaccines. And if they take it and after a while get pregnant again, then we know that it works for sure. So it's a supplement of sorts. It's um, based on a supplement. We took um, a silica rich supplement as a basis, and then it's a radionic imprint on okay. that supplement. It's always kind of the same game. Some things can be brought into the body as information only. And the body does what he's directed to do. Mm. And sometimes things are needed in the physical form because the body can't synth synthesize them from information. Right. And this missing link is always the substance you imprint the radionics on so that you have the physical part as a carrier substance and the radionics as the wave carried in. I guess we have come to some solutions at the end in a way that uh, maybe, uh, or some at least, I don't want to say hope, but uh, some actions that may be balancing people that have been vaccinated that are having second uh, second thoughts or second, um, you know, buyer's remorse. Yes. You want to say? Yes. <laughs> it's, I mean, it doesn't make a big difference in any case. It is a solution that might help. We will see how far and... Um, I'm 100% sure not 8 billion people will listen to this podcast. So uh, it's 
couple of thousands in any case. And if the medicine works a bit less or a bit more people listen to it and try it, it doesn't make a difference. It definitely will be enough to make mankind survive. So I'm nice. not worried at all at that point. Nice. Nice. And sometimes I, I, I even I'm ten, tempted to fall for the depopulation, depopulation again. Uh, thinking, mm. okay, if we are not, I hear you. If we are not making it completely kind of saving everyone, then at least the planet is a bit less dense populated. And as long as humans are mad as they are destroying everything around them, that could be good news. So. I, well, we're going we're gonna to get back to a talk on the archives. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel the need to completely, to completely pull back from judging and whoever decides what he wants to do, he does what he wants to do and he survives So it doesn't survive. People try to victimize each other. Mm. It's just one way to express yourself as a soul. Well, maybe, maybe in a future chat, we'll specifically focus on the Archons and we can d delve deep into that topic. I've been biting my tongue on a few side potential chats during this one you know, to kind of keep on track mm. with our, our belief and uh, responsibility, let's say, and how that works and can can work. But, uh, you know, maybe we'll delve into we it. We could. Bit. Yeah, yeah. It seems... It we seems could. We, we could do a good journalistic practice and invite some Archons into the talk as well hmm. to give them a chance to present their opinion. Yeah, that uh, my, my heart is fluttering a little bit with that potential. I'm going, oh, but you know, I've, I've, I've had my interactions, no, no doubt, you know, through my life. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'd be, I'd be delighted to go, go down that crazy route with you. You know, one day I think it'd be a fun, uh, fun uh, as an interesting talk for sure. Presentation experiment. It's it's an, I love chatting with you yeah. because nothing is a straight talk. If, Everything becomes kind of an experiment as we're we're developing our conversations yeah. together. Yeah. yeah, maybe somebody who is completely possessed by an organ comes along and will be willing to participate. That would be kind of fun. If if he meets if he crosses my path, I will ask him. Okay, I'll be in. Do you have someone like that crosses your path? If. You've, if 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 you find somebody where you can really see the spider in the face or the tongue coming out because of the snake is in full control or whatever, ask him. They call it Sangaku here, which is interesting, where the eyes bug out and you see three sides of the white instead of two sides when they're possessed, like the energy. Uh, okay, okay, that is a bit too much of possession. Okay, we've gone far enough with that. And Harold... Just yes. cl clear speech would be welcome. Okay. And clear, clear opinions, clear or contact opinions. All right. We'll, 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 we'll keep this one on track then. And I'll, I'll hold back my curiosity for another time on that topic with us. And uh, Harold, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your, your time. I know it's late for you again and early for me. So I, uh, I am grateful for the, the, the moments we spend together and uh, this will go up everyone very soon. I'm going to try and get this one up quickly because I think the information is important. And uh, Harold, whenever that article is ready, if it's ready and you want to share it with our readers, feel free to share with me. I'll, and, let, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm happy. For the to print be. area of your magazine. All right. Another interesting one, Harold. Thank you so much for joining us. Please uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. Sign up to our newsletter. Uh, keep an eye up here. Our first live virtual event was uh, was completed yesterday. I'm going to get that uh, wheel together and put up. I'm going to invite Harold once again, and maybe one day he'll be able to join us and, and uh, chat with us live and all the other lovely luminaries. And uh, either way, I get to share this. And I thank you all for taking the time to watch again. Like and subscribe, as I said. Any comments, leave them below. I'll pass them along to Harold if he misses them. And we're both happy to have spent this time sharing with you. Light of my heart No one tells me where I should start